Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Quickly, with the new guest, it is quickly becoming a fan favorite. I get comments all the time. Miss Beth Traverso. How are you doing, Beth? Hey, Michael, doing great. Always a highlight of my week to be here with you. So thanks. Good to be back. The audience loves you. I don't know if you oh. take the time to look at the comments, but they really do uh, love what you bring to oh, the table. That a is new really positive nice. energy. Yeah, and I awesome. really appreciate that. Sometimes I'm scared to look at comments because you know how the internet can be. So <laughs> Yeah, no, That's I, really I nice will. Yeah, I Thank will delete any of the bad ones. Okay. <laughs> yeah, folks. So if you appreciate Beth being here, bringing in the different energy uh, and experience to the table, she's a one percent agent across the country. She does not need to be here, but she does it for you. So give her some love below. Let her know that you appreciate her. That would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. All right, Beth. We got to talk about your market. Let's remind right. people what what that is, and uh, let's talk about what's going on. Right. So I'm in the Seattle area and um, it's been an interesting week. So, you know, we've been catching up every week on things. And wow, one thing I can say about real estate that I like about it is it's always different. You can never get complacent doing the same thing in the same track. That is not going to work and never has. And I like that because I'm the kind of person I need variety and I need challenges and I need to be quick on my feet. And this is not disappointed. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty wild. Yeah. I, mean I know. We, yeah, we had talked rates, just a couple of weeks ago about yeah. what I know. We, I remember, I remember about maybe a month ago, we were discussing this what if scenario, if things go to seven, it was like this kind of mind blowing exercise of what would that look like? And I remember at the time I was thinking, I don't know if it's going to get that high. And then, well, if it does, it might be next, you know, first quarter next year, or I wasn't really sure. I mean, nobody knows. It's all speculation, right? Oh, it's all, it's just, yeah, it's just all guesses. Yeah. It's an exercise, right? And then, uh, and then boom, now it's a reality. So now we get to find out in real time. So yeah. Yeah, I, I remember, so I remember yeah. our conversation from June. June was interesting yeah. because June historically, at least in many markets is a pretty decent month. And I remember you saying these words, and I think this is a, an exact quote. Michael, when rates went to six, the, the market crashed 50% in transactions. That's a big, that's a, that's a horror. And now we're at seven. What the heck is going on? Yeah. So I'm watching very, very carefully, you know, real estate's a big ship. You turn it and it doesn't show right away, you know? So mm -hmm. what we see are the leading indicators like showings and offers and things like that. That's the first thing that happens. And mm -hmm. so um, what I've been seeing is there are, uh, everyone's kind of catching their breath. I have found that this jump from six to seven is not as um, much of a shock to the system as the three to six was, of course. So, uh, okay. you know, that was just, just stopped everything in its tracks. And things adjusted in my market, they adjust. And I have to say, everybody's market's different. I know in other places, things are going to be completely different. And mm -hmm. that's, that's all I can speak as to what I know. Right. Um, the, uh, so what I'm seeing now is I'm seeing very, very few new listings. Mm -hmm. And that probably would have been on in the works for a while, because if people were planning, if people were already ready to pull the trigger on listing their house, I don't know if they're not going to because of 7%. Some people might. But the six to seven percent seems like it's people are recalibrating right now. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing some new listings getting lots of traffic, lots of traffic. And I wonder if that might be we can speculate as to why everyone has their own story, all these buyers out there. But it might be that it, a lot of people now are on the, the thought train that rates are going to be climbing. And so you know, they maybe were pausing when it was at six, thinking they were going to be in the driver's seat and everything was going to be in their favor and they could wait, wait, wait. And now boom, seven and talking about raising it more, people are starting to maybe think that, hey, if we want to make a move, maybe this is the time for some people that might be what they're thinking. Yeah, because it's really interesting. I had a conversation with John Wake, who's a, a Phoenix uh, experience and like a legacy economist, like that was his job, right? His business card said economist. and. Uh, we were talking about the buyer and seller psychology because we are really interesting, uh, an interesting time. So uh, I want to talk about your market because that's what you know. Obviously, you're in a well-to-do area, right? Seattle's median price is nine something, you know, yeah. million dollar listings mm -hmm. are not unusual, right? Correct. That to me means it's a more affluent area, higher income, stock wealth. All of those things are all probably reasonable assumptions. Uh, I think there's two things going on. That could be could be either hurting or helping the buyer. It's really weird to think about. 
One is higher rates, you know, because again, we went we went to six, we came back to five, we went back to six. Some people might have thought saying, Oh, I know what's next, we're going to five. Whoops, mm-hmm. we went to seven. So maybe that gets them off the sidelines because hey, we don't want to have eight. And then two, obviously, the stock market, you're obviously in a very tech heavy area, not been doing great, you know, bear market territory. I wonder if that's getting people off the sidelines, like, hey, I'm going to cash out. I'm going to sell my RSUs, my stocks. I'm going to be cash rich. I got to put this to work. Or they're saying, damn it, I don't have my down payment anymore. I'm going to wait till my stock goes up 40%. What, I mean, you hear all these conversations. What is going on in the Yeah, I line? think there's both out there. Yeah, so I think, yeah, right? It's never as simple as one thing. So it's always a combination of factors and it's which one's going to win out over the other. Um, but I have been seeing more cash purchases lately again. And so maybe it's people pulling money from other sources to park oh, it, it in real be. estate, you know, why else? Um, uh, so th- I am seeing a lot of that. Um, and this is a great time for cash buyers. If you're going to be, it's always a great time for cash buyers. Right. But right now uh, if you can get yeah. a lower price and you can get, you know, a better yeah. return and long-term it's risky and to be in stocks. I, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never been a stock I, person. Yeah. But ca- a cash buyer today, you got all the power, right? You, you can close, you can get a discount on price and most cash buyers probably are sophisticated. They're like, Hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a 7% mortgage. But if we ever get back to four, I'll refi later and then I'll replenish my cash. Yeah, I know I that's what half will, of them because are that's thinking. what they were doing before. All these cash buyers a year ago, people were saying, oh, all these cash buyers are beating us in these bidding wars. Like, yeah, they're cash for a little while. Yeah, and then they're going to like refi nine months or nine, yeah. 90 days. Yeah, it's like because <laughs> it made sense. Like, why would it, it's a perfectly legitimate way of dealing with of that market? So I, I had three and clear properties that I put mm-hmm. 3.99 mortgages on. Why wouldn't I? I mean, yeah, inflation's 9%. And, you know, I can get a 3.99 fix for 30 years. Why wouldn't I? So I did that a bunch. Yeah, that. And then the, these same people that had their stock portfolios booming, they're like, why would I take my money out of that if I can, uh, or, you know, yeah. you take it out for a little while and then maybe put it back in or, you know, it's just kind of right. like a game of moving things around the board. So, um, so I'm seeing more cash buyers. I'm seeing, um, so there's certain areas in my market that are kind of like the the canary in the coal mine or the harbingers oh. of what's to come. And there's certain areas that, like one area I'll say is Sammamish. So there's this area called Sammamish. It's a very, one of the most affluent areas in the U.S. And it's right next to all the tech hubs, mm-hmm. right in my backyard. And what I'm seeing there is like it either runs super, super hot or it's absolutely dead. Mm-hmm. And so we went from hottest to the hot in the springtime all the way through until about April and then in the summer, when the rates bumped up, everyone just stopped. And again, I don't think it's an affordability issue. I think it's just a, yeah. it's a functionality of how, they fe- how they're how they feeling as consumers. You're talking about the consumers all the time, the psychology right. of how they feel about it and what they want to do. It's like, oh, everybody's doing this. And then now everybody's doing that. So they don't want to go against that. Yeah, and okay. now I'm seeing that, that new listings are starting to get uh, a lot of activity in that area again. So- there's very, very little for sale. Price is corrected. So sellers got the message immediately. So they were high and then they went way down, corrected back in July and plat- it kind of kept steady in August. And I haven't seen prices start to go back up again, but I am starting to see, and I don't know if they will, you know, it's hard to speculate about that. I definitely don't think we're going to see huge gains for mm. a while. That would be really mm. surprising if we did. Yeah. But I am seeing things tend to um, st- recalibrate and stabilize. We're in sort of a more stabilized market now. And I think buyers are starting to jump back on the good listings. Of course, there's the ones right. that weren't prepped right, that are priced wrong, that just aren't good. Those are still going to struggle. Yeah. So that's the buyer psychology. The seller psychology is equally important, right? Because again, a lot of these sellers... Now, it's, your market's interesting because you. I think you said this last week, a, a good position percentage of your sellers are selling and exiting the market, meaning they're going somewhere else, yeah. right? Usually when that's the mindset, they're sitting on a gargantuan percentage of equity, right? So a 50K haircut, it hurts. It's not like anybody would want that, but on the scale of what they're getting, it's a rounding yeah. error. Um, it, that's probably still true, but it, it, what is winter like? Cause I don't, your, your Mark Santo is weird. It's like, between now and the end of the year, slow or busy? But yeah, so what we see is we see a little bit of a bump around now in the fall. 
right. And then um, summer's very quiet, you know, because it's our good weather months and people just go, they're off, they're ah, gone. Ah, that's why. It's beautiful and they're outdoorsy and they want to be out in the, the outdoors, Nature. having fun, yeah. going on vacation. That's what they're doing. And then there's a little bit of a bump after Labor Day right now. You know, I'm still, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing a bump more in activity than in listing, new listings. And okay. then it starts to dwindle down. This is the traditional seasonality. It dwindles down to life support over the holidays. So it's just nothing, 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 nothing. Right. More and more, you know, like it goes down, 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 down to almost absolutely nothing on the market. In fact, there are certain little pockets of the market where there literally will be not even one listing. Mm. And then- okay. When and then and then somebody lists about mid January. When I found the psychology is, is people are ready. The buyers are ready on Christmas Day. In fact, my friends over at Zillow, I used to be really really close with them, and they told me that Christmas Day was one of their busiest days on their site. And oh. as people are past the holidays, they got their yeah. new iPad or whatever. They're looking at new. They're making plans for the next year. And it's fast for a buyer to make the decision that they want to buy. We want to buy in the springtime or we want to buy as soon as we can. There's nothing to buy right now, but we want to buy. And it takes a little while for sellers to catch up. So mm. they have to get past the holidays and then start yeah. prepping their house. And that takes right. a good three to four weeks on average. Sure. And because the standards are really high in our area, people expect perfect. They expect stage, they expect professional, everything, you know. So it takes a little time to get that done and then yeah. launched. And then so there's nothing for sale. All these eager buyers, two or three good listings come trickling on and then they just all pile on. And that's what we've been seeing the last several, you know, many years, but especially intense the last two years okay. with everything that was going on. So I'm curious to see, you know, is that going to happen? It's not going to happen with the same intensity. I feel pretty confident about that, but I don't know that it's going to not bump at all in January. Yeah. It depends on how fast people adjust to this new reality people do tend to have short-term memories. You know, they kind of, I've already moved past the 3%. I think everybody, nobody thinks that's coming back anytime soon that I know. So, yeah. um, but as far as it being an equity haircut, you know, I think people are, have accepted that. The sellers that I talk to, which I've been talking with quite a few sellers, even though the listing um, inventory is low, I have a lot of people talking to me right now who just want some coaching and guidance on, can we sell our house now? What would that look like? Mm -hmm. yeah, we're not going to get what maybe we would have before, but most people seem pretty accepting of that. They just want to know, is it going to work for our purchase? Like, is our plan going to be feasible? Mm -hmm. And so we talk about that, if it's going to, if it's still going to work for them or not. And most of the time it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think in general, every market is different. But when I, when I look out at the country, I think what we're heading into is, is uh, month after month, meaning September, October, November, December is declining active listings. I think we're going to see some of the FOMO wish pricing either cancel the listings or expire because it's usually 90 to 180 day contracts. I just think, I just think by, you know, January 1st will be lower inventory than, you know, most, if not all this year. What, what do you think about that? Yep. I agree. I'm, I'm seeing that happening. And so, and I am seeing more and more people start to drop off the market and not come back on. You know, we had talked before about oh, yeah. people just doing Resetting. Big price drops. And I'm not seeing as many like five, you know, 50 to 100,000 plus price drops. I'm not seeing as much of that. People tend to be more realistic with their pricing or they're starting out. The market has stabilized more or less in pricing where we are. So it's hit a new level and people are pretty much sticking there. Yeah. Um, but people aren't going to go down a hundred grand over what things were selling for last year. For example, they're just going to take them off the market if it's not going to happen more. Yeah, or less, I think, you know? I think, I think, I think sellers, cause again, buyers, your market's different, right? A million dollar list price income levels, but generally speaking, we lost a lot of buyers at six. We lost more at seven. So yeah. I think that's a known known. What is an unknown is seller psychology. And I think right now, just given all going on, I can just hear people saying, you know what, honey, we're going to wait till spring. We're going to wait till spring, which is generally speaking, the time that, that inventory picks up. So I don't know. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun speaking with you every week about the market. And uh, yeah. Beth, uh, where can people find you? People can find me on my website, Beth Traverso group .com. Nice. Thanks, Beth. Thank you.